Hey, hey, you want me to do the video now? Like right now? Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm getting up hard. Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you guys stopping by very much. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm going to attempt to say this in, in uh, Tagalog. Um, so I have uh, Maligayong uh, Park Dating um, Sa Ma Chess, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I think I said that correctly. Uh, feel free to let me know if I need to tweak it a little bit. Um, so, but that is how I have it written down. Uh, so, uh, as always, my people in the Philippines, uh, I will say, uh, Mabuhay, uh, uh, Kamusta, Kamusta na, uh, Almasao Tayo, Mabuding Pagbadi, uh, Masaya Koma Kira King Muli, um, let me see, Meruming Salamat Po Sana Nunuo to Inga King Ma Video, a King Ma Kaibigan. Appreciate you guys very much, uh, for stopping by. Uh, and, um, yeah, so I have the uh, 2008 uh, PGMA Cup International Chess Tournament, and it was held in the Manila, Philippines, uh, and it is between Wesley So and Julio Cisadora. Uh So I was able to get like you know their pictures of them kind of wearing pretty much what they wore during that tournament. Um, so it's like uh, you know all you know the colors and everything are are, are correct. Uh, but if you guys are ready to go, uh, let's take a look and see what we have for this game. All right, so we got e4, c5. So we do have the Sicilian on the board. Knight to f3, we see e6, and then we see b3. Now, b3 is not like a super rare move. It's about fifth on the list. Uh, so as you guys know, of course, d4 is, d4 is played like millions of times. No, not millions of times, but it's played like 60% set, like of the time if you're going to play. So we see b3. So this is the Sicilian defense of the Westerinen attack. Uh, and uh, so it's just kind of like a little offbeat a little bit. You know, you're going to fee this bishop over here on the queen side. Uh, and then black pretty much has the same idea. Uh, so we see b6, bishop to b2. We see b bishop to b7. Uh, we see e5. Uh, it does kind of blunt your bishop just a little bit, but you are messing up this knight's ability to come to like its most desirable square. Uh, and then, you know, d4 is going to be coming at some point. Uh, so we see knight to e7. We see knight to a3, and then we do see the novelty of the game, which is knight to g6. Uh, you know, whenever you have like a double movement of this knight here, uh, and you also have like a knight to a3, you know, you're probably going to get into a, a, a novelty pretty quickly. Uh, and uh, after knight to g6, we see a very common theme. You know, after knights come to like g6 and b6, it's just trying to kick them with a with an h pawn or an a pawn. Uh, so we do see h4, and of course, if we're allowed to play h5. Uh, this is going to inconvenience the knight. The knight is going to have to, like, you know, kind of go back here. Or, you know, it might kind of come over here, but it'll still continue to get attacked. Uh, so it's not going to be, you know, very comfortable. Uh, so we do see uh, h5, just stopping any further advancement of the pawn. We see knight over to c4. Uh, we see knight to c6. Uh, we see bishop to d3, uh, you know, just threatening to, you know, kind of remove uh, this knight and cause, like, some pretty bad... Uh, pawns, uh, and that's definitely not something that you want around your king is to have like a compromised pawn structure. Uh, so we do see knight to f4. Uh, we see bishop to e4. Uh, so this allows a capture of a pawn on g2. Uh, we see king over to f1. We see knight up to f4 again. Uh, knight coming to g5. We see f6. Uh, and we're not worried about this square here because we are protecting it with the knight uh, for the moment. Uh, so we do see knight down to h3. Uh, we see pawn takes e5, knight takes e5, uh, and then we see d5. Uh, and this is a, you know, a really nice pawn center uh, that black has established. And they're, you know, they're making it a pretty tough for this bishop to live. So we do see bishop back to f3. We see bishop to d6. And now something has to give because, I mean, you know, you have too much pressure uh, on this knight. And so, uh, you know, something's going to have to give. So we do see knight takes c6. Bishop takes c6. Uh, we see knight takes f4. Bishop takes f4, and then we do see bishop taking h5 with check. Uh, and uh, as you can see, white has restored their, uh, you know, their peace equality. Uh, so we do see uh, king over to d7. We see rook to g1. Uh, you know, legitimately trying to see if we can kind of creep in there with the rook. Uh, cause some tactics to come up. So queen takes on h4. We see rook takes g7 with check. We see king down to d6. Now, it might kind of look like... You know, black is not doing the best because, you know, their king is kind of like, you know, in the center of board, like just hanging out over here. But black is actually doing a little bit better than white in this position. Uh, and uh, they do have like free range of movement uh, with their rooks. Uh, and they are just a little bit further advanced than black than white is because you see these, this pawn center. Uh, it provides some really good cover for the king. Uh, and, uh, you know, it definitely has the ability to move. And you also do have these two open files. 
uh, with, with for rooks for black rooks right now, and then the king is a little bit compromised. So uh, the bishop comes back down to f3. Uh, we see rook a to g8. Rook takes g8. Rook takes g8. And like I said, it's getting pretty dicey for white because I mean you kind of have a situation where you're not using your rook in the corner. Uh, you know your king is just a little bit exposed. You kind of have some bishops, you know, kind of bearing down on the position. Uh, so we do see d4, uh, and this actually just plummets the position uh, for white. Uh, and you are just way too open uh, in this position. So if you want to go ahead and stop the video and see what Julio Cisador plays in this position, it's a it's a cute move. It's not the best move, but it's one of those moves that like I'm sure Wesley So was kind of surprised. Like, man, like, am I am I getting mated? So like I said, go ahead and stop the video and see if you can guess this move. All right, cool. So the move is actually a uh, bishop to e3. And I mean, of course, bishop to e3 just like literally just immediately just threatens mate right here. So, I mean, this is a very uncomfortable move to have to meet over the board. Uh, and uh, so, you know, something something has to be done about it. Um, it's just kind of a question of like, you know, what do you do about it? Right. Uh, and so what actually happened in the game was pawn takes c5 with check and then bishop takes uh, c5. Um, but um, what was actually uh, possible before bishop to e3 um, which was actually the best move in the position is actually bishop to b5 with check uh, And it's just really really hard to like defend against this uh, Defend against this check because you are threatening uh, Some pretty nasties and stuff. So of course you can't move over here. You're gonna be looking at rook here and that's checkmate uh, So you're gonna be having to throw your c pawn in the way uh, and uh, You know after c4 you're gonna see pawn taking c4 Pawn taking c5 with check. King just sidestepping, not caring, going to e7. Uh, and then a4. After bishop to a6, you see b4. But then you do see the discovery, which is pretty nasty. Uh, it's going to be winning this bishop. Uh, you know, you got you are checked here. Uh, and like I said, you just have too many problems with your king being just too open over here. So um, after bishop to e3, like I said, we did see pawn take c5 with check. Bishop takes c5, and then we see queen over to e1. And this actually, unfortunately, kind of puts the king in an even tighter box than it was in a second ago. Uh, and so now you see queen to f4, uh, just attacking your undefended bishop here. Uh, once you do um, defend it, which you really don't want to move your king like closer to the black pieces. <laughs> uh, but uh, we do see um, bishop to b5. Pull this down a little bit. Uh, we do see bishop to b5, uh, and then we see c4. And then we actually see bishop takes c4 with check. Um, and it is in this position um, that Wesley So does resign the game. Uh, and, um, you know, you are... There, there's a couple different things I'm going to mention about this position. Um, if you do end up taking the bishop on c4, which is pretty much going to be your only option, uh, you're going to be looking at... Not pawn takes. You're going to be looking at queen, queen taking c4, sorry. Uh, and then king down to d1, queen to d3 with check. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is really bad because if you do try to cover with d2, uh, queen to d2, you see rook to g1 with mate. And so you see rook to g1 is like always a mating possibility. Uh, and uh, if you do go ahead and go king to c1, you're going to be looking at rook to c8. And you guys can see this discovery is really nasty. You don't even have the ability to go like queen to e5 with check because the king is going to go back to d7. Uh, and even going queen to c3, you're going to be looking at bishop to e7. So as you guys can see, this is like pretty much best play for white. Uh, and even best play, I mean, you're just like literally dropping all kinds of material. So it's just really, really nasty to, to be looking at. Um, but if we do go back, um, after we saw uh, bishop to e3, um, if you did take the bishop at this point, uh, you would actually be looking at queen to h2. Uh, the bishop would have to block on g4, and then rook to f8 would check. You would just end up coming back to f3. And then the rook wouldn't redirect itself back to g8. You'd actually be seeing bishop to b5. So you can see bishop to b5 has like literally been in the position forever. Uh, and then you'd have to play c4. Uh, and you pretty much wind up with like similar situations that you had before. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're just going to be like in, in just like the worst position ever. So, um, yeah, that is that game. Um, it's pretty interesting. You know how it's like the material is like completely even, but like black just has such a dominant position, uh, you know, over white. And it's mostly because of the fact that these two pieces over here, they're really kind of not being used. So it's almost like black is playing, uh, you know, three. Let me see. We get in the position that like we had in the game. It's almost kind of like, you know, black is playing like four pieces against like two. Because like I said, these two pieces don't really have an influence on the game whatsoever. So it's a pretty interesting game. 
um, I think. Um, so it's a pretty nice, uh, you know, kind of like early, early encounter for these two, uh, these two players, because you know, uh, So had only been playing for a couple of years. So, um, but yes, let me get to these, uh, these good mornings for my people in the Philippines, from everywhere around in the Philippines. Uh, so my Anyong Buntog, Mayad na Agahan, Nine Bag na Bigat, Masantos ya Kabasan, Marhe na Aga, Buenos Dias, Ma Anyong Aga, Mapia na Uma, Kapian Kapuno Dios, Mayap a Abak. Uh, Mayad na aga, uh, mapia agai, mapia kapapita, my big abukla, uh, maraja na buntag, maria my nat. Um, let me see what it, what it was. Um, was it Mayad? Maupe na aga. Yes. Uh, Kasan yangan si uh, and uh, assalamu alaikum, uh, uh, salam, uh, merci. Uh, appreciate everybody very much. Uh, and I will say, uh, pa alam. Um, and um, let me see, is it Mamaya? Mamaya a king makaibigan? Let me see. Yeah, Mamaya. So later, my friends. And I will see you guys next time.